Salutations dear viewers, this is George from Ireland and uh, this video is about the um, Sunningdale Agreement. Uh, so in my previous video on the Northern Ireland Troubles, I've been talking about the um, power sharing arrangement in early 1974. Forgive me, because I neglected to mention when the Conservative government's white paper had really come to fruition. That was December 1973 when the, the Sunningdale Agreement was signed. Um, so uh, the UK government was trying to get negotiations between the Irish government, the SDLP, the Ulster Unionists, the Alliance Party, whoever else. So they felt the security situation in Northern Ireland was too risky. They couldn't jeopardise everyone's lives by holding the meeting there. The Republic of Ireland, it was very difficult to guarantee the security of um, Unionist politicians and indeed the British government. So the meeting was held at Sunningdale, which is a village uh, a bit west of London. There's a civil service training college and uh, that was the building used uh, for the meeting there because it was easier to guarantee security. So um, the Ulster Unionist Party, who were uh, Faulknerites, went because Brian Faulkner, despite having been, been Mr. No of the late 60s, was there uh, willing to sign this agreement. Remember, Brian Faulkner had been against one vote for each adult in local elections of the 60s, but uh, he'd changed his attitude very considerably. Alliance Party, SDLP there, London and Dublin governments. So um, anyway, the British government felt it would undercut support for the IRA, um, which uh, was not really going to happen. I mean, the ardent IRA supporters would say, no, it's all or nothing. We must achieve everything we want. And they wouldn't uh, settle for any uh, agreement with unionists. And uh, it was Danny Morrison, I believe, who later say that, that said that uh, unionism is fascistic and uh, rep Republicans cannot and should not uh, uh, reach a compromise with them. So um, the executive was formed of the SDLP, uh, the Ulster Unionist Party and the Alliance Party and that took office in late 73 governing into 74. Um, however, um, a large minority within the Ulster Unionist Party were opposed to this agreement, felt that it was making um, such large concessions to nationalism that the Unionist position might be fatally undermined. The internecine conflict uh, still continued. Um, what else? So uh, by 1973, um, most of the nationalist community was alienated by the security forces. Something I should have perhaps mentioned earlier, everyone knows about Bloody Sunday, but some months earlier, August 1971, um, some uh, horrific things had occurred in Bally, Bally Murphy, which is an area of uh, Belfast. So over three days, the parachute regiment shot dead 10 people in 10 separate incidents, none of whom was armed at the time. So the Paras had been sniped at by the IRA in that area. It was a hotbed of Republican activity. Um, however, um, these 10 people, I don't think, presented any threat to the Parachute Regiment when they were killed. No one has ever prosecuted for that. So this is why people said there was a culture of impunity at the time, that um, some British soldiers felt that they could kill anyone and uh, get away with it. Um, by the 80s, that was to change. So this was, of course, uh, very much exploited by Republican propagandists who exaggerated the number of people killed. But um, on the face of it, I don't know all the particulars, uh, some of these soldiers should have been prosecuted for killing civilians, knowing them to be civilians. One of these people was shot 14 times. Um, by the time he'd been shot with a few bullets, surely no one could imagine he was any threat, even if he did have a gun. So and they, the IRA spread uh, their propaganda in the United States. Some Irish Americans who were misinformed lapped it up. The Irish Northern Aid Committee was formed and they raised funds for the IRA. Um, gangsters in the United States were given a shopping list and they sent uh, weapons over to the IRA. Such things could be very easily purchased in um, the United States. The US government eventually uh, interdicted some illegal shipments of arms. Um, <clears throat> so. Let me see, there was a, a February 1974 election across the UK. Um, so the uh, Conservative government of Edward Heath was voted out, did manage to form a coalition with the Liberals. Harold Wilson became Labour Prime Minister again. Um, so let me see, um, uh, Faulkner was still trying to run the executive, but he'd been voted out as leader of the Ulster Unionist Party. Harry West had taken over. West had been elected uh, as a member of Parliament for his home constituency of Fermanagh, South Tyrone, and he was obdurate. So <clears throat> anti-Sunningdale Unionists of all parties formed the United Ulster Unionist Council. That's the um, uh, anti-Sunningdale group within the UUP and indeed the DUP, um, and some parties which were affiliated with loyalist terrorist organisations. 
The UDA was a, a legal organization at the time. Its killings were carried out and be claimed in the name of the UFF because the Ulster Freedom Fighters, UFF, were killing Catholic civilians quite frequently. Um, so the United Ulster Unionist Council, that's the anti-Sunningdale Unionists, said Dublin is just a Sunningdale away on their slogan on their, a slogan on their posters. It was obviously um, uh, a play on words, like a Sunday away, as in, um, if we don't watch out, pretty soon Northern Ireland will be kicked out of the UK, have to join the Republic of Ireland. So it's worth asking, why uh, were Unionists uh, so keen to remain within the UK? John Taylor, uh, a very exalted Ulster Unionist uh, MP, he was the last Home Affairs Minister in the Stormont government. He said various reasons. Well, our nationality is British, has been so for centuries. Personal loyalty to Her Majesty the Queen. Um, we have greater uh, religious liberty in Northern Ireland. Bear in mind lots of things like divorce or contraception were illegal in the Irish Republic at the time. Um, the economic advantages of being in the UK, such as the NHS or better roads or free university education, or um, I don't know if there was lower unemployment. Well, there certainly was amongst Protestants, maybe not amongst Catholics in Northern Ireland, but higher benefits payments, even if it came to that. Um, so anyway, the February 1974 election, the, the 11 out of the 12 constituencies in Northern Ireland were won by the UUC as in the anti-Sunningdale Unionists. So the executive's legitimacy was severely undermined. The executive was to govern Northern Ireland internally, and that, remember that had few Ulster Unionists, SDLP and Alliance Party politicians. John Hume, leader of the SDLP, he had a portfolio. Um, anyway, so the executive's legitimacy had been undercut by doing so badly, the pro-Sunningdale Unionists, in the, in the uh, February 1974 elections. Um, However, it's not just unionists who count. Come on, look at all the SDLP voters, uh, voters and alliance voters. It might still have been over 50% of people in Northern Ireland who wanted this to go ahead. So, um, curiously, um, uh, Sinn Féin and the hardline unionists agreed on this. They were both against the executive, admittedly for opposite reasons. Um, anyway, uh, so the pro-Sunningdale parties might have won some seats that they hadn't stood against each other, You'd have a pro-Sunningdale Unionist and an SDLP person and an Alliance Party candidate in the same constituency as well as an anti-Sunningdale Unionist. So um, despite um, the uh, pro-Sunningdale parties having done badly in the February 1974 Westminster election, the Irish government and the UK government were adamant the executive must stay. They saw it was the only way of um, taking the heat out of the conflict. Well, the Ulster Workers' Council was formed and they decided to call a strike. Uh, so barricades were er erected across streets in uh, loyalist areas, particularly working class areas. The UDA, sometimes the UVF, even Vanguard, was there to try and frighten people away from going to work, to not opening shops and so on. Petrol stations were shut. Some people willingly took part in the strike, others did not. Incidentally, this was a time of workerism and people thought that the organised working class uh, were particularly noble. There were lots of strikes in Great Britain at the time. Trade, trade unions were very active. Arthur Scargill, eat your heart out. So um, crucially, the main power station in Northern Ireland was shut down because a high majority of workers there were uh, unionists. There was another power station in Derry where most of the workers were nationalists and John Hume thought they could maybe split the grid in half and power maybe half the country from Derry. It didn't happen. The UK government thought could they get the army in to run these power stations, but the top brass said they would have no idea what they're doing. Wilson denounced the strikers as spongers, saying, you know, you'll take the subvention from Westminster, but you're not willing to abide by laws and orders promulgated in Westminster. You're spongers. Paisley and his acolytes wore sponges in the lapels to try to ridicule Wilson. Um, so May 1974, Faulkner resigned as the chief executive. The newspaper headline was The Executive Collapses. So chief executive was as close to being prime minister as Northern Ireland was to have uh, again. Remember, Faulkner had been the last Prime Minister until 1972. So um, uh, loyalists were jubilant. They, they had um, collapsed the Sunningdale Agreement and power sharing. So um, Faulkner and his followers, they withdrew support for the agreement. Why? I suppose it was pretty unpopular amongst the unionist community and they felt it was unworkable the only way to stop the strike. They said that um, the Irish Republic must renounce any claim to Northern Ireland before they would uh, engage in another power sharing agreement. Perhaps it was a loss of nerve on his side. So um, the SDLP was despondent. 
They felt they'd been making real progress here. They'd been let down by Faulkner when the heat was on. Of course, the SDLP had been getting a lot of grief from their own side, from hardliners in the nationalist community, Republicans saying, how can you possibly um, make a deal with unionists who are vile and <clears throat> even uh, mainstream unionists like Faulkner, they have mixed feelings about loyalist terrorism and uh, unionism has no legitimacy. So that's all about the Sunningdale Agreement.